Income tax 2022-2023 earned income tax credit the EIC with one qualifying child tax software example. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040 populated using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules at the IRS website irs.gov irs.gov starting point we've got the single filer mr anderson living in beverly hills 90210 we've got the 100,000 w2 income way over the threshold to be getting the earned income tax credit but that's our starting point here and then we will lower that number 12,950 standard deduction getting us to the 87,050 taxable income page number two calculating the tax 14774 15000 withheld and that gets us to the 226 of the bottom line back to page 1 now we're going to be saying that there's one child so when we add the child to it it's going to generally move our filing status from single to head of household let's do that first all right so now filing support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it status has moved to head of household we've got the one child here and we're going to say now the standard deduction has increased to the 19400 instead of the 12,950 for the single filer because we went to head of household and then on the second page we note that we have the uh, child tax credit but we don't have of course the earned income tax credit now if we have the one filer then we want to think about uh this category the max credit could be the 3,733 and then there's a difference in like the way the curve would look for a single filer or non-married and a married filer so this would be the maximum and this is the two this is the items or the agi limit when it phases out to zero but we also want to think about the curve as it goes up now the other thing to point out with this is the lower income side with these refundable credits also could result in situations more likely where be getting married could be a disincentive sometimes because then you could lose you could end up losing you know a fairly substantial credit which is often the case when a child's involved so it's kind of an interesting situation because you can you can question well does that in what does that incentivize as well in terms of the tax code is that having an impact because usually getting married is a benefit from a tax perspective if you're well off or middle you know if you're but on the low end with these refundable tax credits there could be incentives not to get married which is kind of you know seems like not exactly what you would want uh but that's kind of some of the problems when you have the the other issue of course is that this credit in particular is trying not to fall into the trap of is locking people into not being able to get work because they lose the credit that's why you have that earned income component but there always seems to be some of these negative kind of consequences with some of these uh, laws but in any case we'll take a look at that as well let's bring the income down and we're going to say let's bring it down to let's just say it like four thousand to start off with four thousand of income i'm going to remove the federal tax just so i don't get confused and we'll basically plot out the curve and then we'll get into the married situation and possibly look at you know what would happen to two single people that then got married situation all right so we've got first the the uh 4,000 obviously that's below the threshold now of the 19.4 therefore no taxable income but still could have a benefit to file because of the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit we're focused here on the earned income tax credit so at 4,000 let's just plot this out again so we can get an idea 4,000 the credit is at 1365 uh, 1 1365 and let's bring it on up to 8,000 
8,000. And just see what that does on the credit. Credit goes up to 2729. So let's put that there. 2729 for 8,000. And let's jump up to 15,000 just so we don't spend too much time on this. So 15,000. So now we're at the uh, 3733. That's the peak. So 3733 at 15,000. That's the highest point of the credit. So now it's going to go back down again. So let's go to 20,000. And we'll say, okay, 20,000, 3733. So it's staying at the peak. 20,000, 3733. Let's go to 25,000. 25,000. That brings us up to 2951. So we got 2951 at 25,000. Uh, hold on a second. K okay, Paul, so 2951, 25,000. 2951, okay, 30,000. 30,000. Almost there to the maximum or till we phase out entirely. Uh, 2152, 2152, 2152. I did it again. Dang it. 2152, 30,000. All right. Go to 35,000. Get out of here. That's not what I wanted to do. 35,000. And then 1353. Okay. 1353 for 35,000. 40,000. 40,000 almost to the upper threshold to get anything. Obviously, it's going down. 554. So that's the 554, the 40,000. And then let's, if we go anything above 43, so 44,000, let's say 43, uh, 492, it goes to zero. So let's say 44,000, it goes to zero. Now note that if you had combat pay, for example, that's pay that wouldn't be included in income, but you might be able to include it in wages. And you can see why that might be a benefit. I mean, you can include it possibly in income, earned income for the calculation of the earned income tax credit, which you could see why would be beneficial possibly because it could result in increased credit as the income basically uh, goes up. Let's go ahead and plot this on a graph just so we can kind of get a visual of this. We'll say plot it on a graph. Boom, something like that. And so now we can see, you can kind of visualize what's happening. Your income is going up. Income on the x-axis, the credit going up. It caps out at that 3733, three, three, which it stops out for a while and then it goes back down until your income goes back down to and you don't get any more credit. If we mirror that in, this is the instructions for the form 1040. We're looking at this column now. We're saying, okay, single filer, this is the income level, one qualifying child, this is the amount of the credit as income goes up. So it's going up, 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 and then it's gonna cap out at some point. It's going over here, it's up, 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 and then it's going up, 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 and over here up 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 until it maxes out at the 3733 that's at the 10950 and then it stays at that flat level at the maximum for quite some time so it's flattened out there until we get down to still going still going till we get down to the 20200 about and then it goes back down. So that's gonna be the curve that you can imagine in your mind. If we mirror what we did here, the 15,000 falls in there and then it starts going back down. 25,000, it should be at the 2951. At, what was that, 25,000? 25,000, which is down here, 25,000, 2951, right? And then it goes to the 30,000, 2152. 30,000 
30,000 is two, is two one five two and so on. So you get you get kind of the idea there. So so note if it, if you were married, then you would think everything would kind of double when you're married, but it's not right. The cap only goes from forty three. It phases completely out from forty three four uh, ninety two to forty nine uh, two sixty six. I mean, forty nine six twenty two. So you can imagine, like for example. If we were maxed out, if we had two people maxed out at, what did we say, like 20,000? 20,000, 20, let's say, that gets us to 3,733. Uh, 3,733, 3, 3, 3, 3. if I said that was our starting point, 20,000 income at 3,733, 3, 3. and then you got married let's say we got married first and we keep it keep everything else the same no other income involved so now we're going to go married filing joint and if i go back on over so now married filing joint now we still we just have the one individual here and we kept the income the same so obviously the standard deduction has doubled so that's good from a married perspective that does kind of what you what you kind of expect it to do and you've got the the child tax credit that plays in here but but now we're at still with the earned income credit is still at the 3733 right so from the earned income level you still had 20,000 income with a married couple and it didn't really change that now that's a little bit deceiving because there's some interplay between the child tax credit and that stuff as well. But you can imagine situations where people become kind of worse off from a earned income credit standpoint when they get married. So for example, if you had another, the other spouse, let's say, earned revenue as well. So let's say we had W W2 income at another 20,000. Now you're gonna be pretty close to the threshold being over the threshold so now we've got a uh, one qualifying child and if i go to here so now we're at the 1534 because although although the tables are not exact here you get more of a benefit if married they're not like doubled you know so you can imagine a situation where you get where you get married and you lose a substantial part of uh, the earned income tax credit whereas if they were separate in this case the the second spouse one spouse would have gotten the earned income credit and the other spouse would have been over the threshold at twenty thousand to earn the income tax credit with no children uh, you could have a situation where you have uh, two people that both had a child let's say they were kind of even here they had 20,000 each and they both had one child. So the earned income tax credit is 3,733. 3, if they got married, they would be jumping then from two people at this level to a married couple, two people here and here to, to now one couple that has two children and would now be on this side. So it's just for the fun of it, we'll get into that more next time with that two two people but let's just add another dependent just for the fun of it so now we're in a situation if i go to page one we had married couple uh, uh J mr and mrs henderson two dependents now so they were single before now they got married the income is doubled to forty thousand, so they were two individuals completely the same from a tax standpoint of twenty twenty thousand each and one uh, and one dependent the the standard deduction goes up substantially which is what you would kind of expect because it doubled because now you might have double the income so now you've got the income but if I look at the just the earned income tax credit it's now at the 3265 right if I look at that and before so before I would have had if I multiply this times two and I did this individually you'd have 40,000 of in income and you would have two people filing head of household getting 3,733 both. 
right? So they would have they would have got an earned income tax credit of seven four six six, and when they get married, the earned income tax credit is three two six five. Now that's not like a a perfect comparison because we can also basically look at the 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 other things involved here, the the child tax credit uh, that's going to be involved. We could just take a look at the bottom line, and of course the standard deduction that got doubled. So if this was at 5852, let's say 5852, and go back to the single situation, and let's say we get rid of Jill, and that sounded bad, we got rid of her. <laughs> we, we're gonna get rid of her, She's, we're, going, we're reversing back to where we were before. So, and then we reverse back, not to single, but head of household, head of household. Boom. So now we're at head of household one, and let's bring the income back down to 20,000. 20,000 income. All right, I think I got everything right now. So, so then we're at the 5233. Three. So, 5233. Three. So, there's still, you know, a difference. A difference involved and the difference could be substantial because you would have two people filing head of household versus the one married filing joint return so you end up with a substantial difference i did that quite quickly but the general idea is that you would basically want to do some tax projections uh when getting married if you're in that kind of situation not so that it'll be a determining factor to get married or not but just to basically understand what the taxes will be so it does, so it's not like a like a shock you probably want to do some projections there you know on the lower income side of things with these credits that are going to be involved these refundable credits in particular they they could possibly result in getting married having a tax detriment as opposed to a tax benefit which is often the case uh when when you're not dealing with these refundable credit situations oftentimes now, I also just want to point out all the time that this, you got to watch out for the scammers there because the scammers, in order to maximize everything, will, will often try to use the Schedule C, right? So if you had no income, if your income was zero, then it's like, well, you, shouldn't, you don't even need to file because you have, you have no income, right? And so, but uh, if you had some income, then you might be able to get the, the earned income tax credit. So you could say, well, what if we did the the schedule c income right and just also just to point out the schedule c income is valid but you also have to be careful of people like scamming the, the schedule c income because trying to just generate some income that would then increase the earned income tax credit because that's something that you would think the irs would be uh and is you know skeptical on and looking you know possibly looking at so you might get an audit if you do that kind of thing. But the Schedule C is, you know, earned income subject to self-employment tax and then could impact, of course, the earned income tax credit, whereas the passive income is not typically earned income, thanks from interest and dividends. So that wouldn't be included. And if you have a lot of passive income, then the whole, you might lose the earned income tax credit because the idea would be that you got a lot of money in the bank or investments in order to generate that income and therefore don't need the earned income tax credit.